Hello and welcome back to my small little library. Today um, we are in a corner of my room you normally don't see. Uh, normally in this corner is where my camera is uh, set up. But today I want to talk about my German books. <laughs> uh, normally just because I do the videos in English I don't really talk that much about the German books I read or generally about the German versions I own. Um, this bookshelf is a mix about German authors and books by them and then German versions of different language books. Um, but a lot of this bookshelf is my childhood and the books I bought, you know, when I was a teenager and I kind of want to talk about them because on the day this video comes out I'm turning 29. Um, so yeah, I'm not yet 30 <laughs> but yeah, I'm turning 29 on the day this goes up and I kind of want to reminisce a little bit and it works quite well doing that while talking about this bookshelf and so I thought, you know, why not do like a more detailed video about my German books and the books that I bought before I started reading um, the books in English if the author is English and like, no, these days I read the majority of books in English um, just because the majority of the authors that I read are English or American or you know one of the countries that speaks English and so then it's just easier and also it's easier easier because um, the community obviously speaks a lot of English so uh, yeah okay so I brought you in a little bit um, nearer to the bookcase and this is the um, highest shelf I'm gonna have to stand on my tiptoes because I'm a really short person but we'll make it work you know um, but yeah, the start, these are sorted alphabetically. Um, I find that to be the, the easiest for when I search for books. So that is how I sort my books. And um, yeah, let's talk specifically about these two. These are by Simon Beckett, um, Kalte Asche und, and Verwesung. I personally, I'm really sorry, but I don't know what all of these books are called in English for, especially for these. Um, I mean, these like one to one translated would mean like rotting and cold ash, but I'm pretty sure that's not what they're called in the original. Um, so yeah, hopefully um, you're okay with that. Uh, but yeah, these are my two Simon Beckett books I read. These are a big, big uh, reason why I love um, thrillers, uh, anthropologists coming in and finding out what went wrong and solving the cases. These two um, combined with Casey Rice, but we're coming to her a little bit later. But yeah, that is, these two, you know, have a big place in my heart. But then I have to show it, even though I've shown it quite a few times on my channel now. But yeah, then we have my German Alice in Wonderland edition. This was my mother's um, from her childhood and she gifted it to me, as you can see. It is taped. Um, it has gone through a lot and yeah, I love this version. Um, I don't read it um, because it seems quite frail. But uh, yeah, the illustrations are... Like a really interesting style, but yeah, I still love it. But yeah, I won't read it just because um, it obviously doesn't have a bag anymore, so it's not the most stable book. Then, a little bit further along, these are two books that I bought um, after I turned 18, so these are more of a recent purchase, <laughs> recent, 10 years ago, but you know, um, these I bought once I moved out to go to university and stuff. Um, these are by Guillermo de Toro and Chuck Hogan, and the first one is called Desart and the second one is called Blut. Um, you will probably know these, the series that was made of these is called The Strain, um, I watched it together with my partner when it came out, the first season. We really liked that one and then we lost interest at the beginning of the second season. Um, but yeah, I read the first two books in the series. I'm pretty sure there's a th third one. Um, this is one of the series I would love to buy in English and read in the original language, you know. 
Um, so yeah, but I really like the series. It's a vampire series where the vampires are really, really weird creatures more or less. Um, but yeah, it has obvious influences from Dracula and stuff. But uh, yeah, if you ever watched The Strain, these are the books. I have no idea what they're called in English. <laughs> And then I have to talk about these two. These are my Michael Ende Bücher, Momo uh, und die unendliche Geschichte, or Momo and the never ending story. Um, this one isn't as good. This one, absolutely fantastic. If you've never read it, pick it up. It's a great, great book and an absolute childhood favorite of mine. I never read the book when I was a child. Um, I just watched the TV, th the TV series and I think there's also a movie. Um, and I loved those so much and the book is <laughs> It's, it's so tragic. It's a really sad story, kind of. And then, yeah, the never ending story. We all know that one. I like the movie a lot better than the book. I think the book is really, really boring. Um, but yeah, I have these two really, really pretty editions. I bought both of them last year, and it's the first time that I've read them last year. But obviously, I grew up with the stories. Um, so yeah, the editions are really, really pretty. <laughs> Okay, now that we're coming down here, um, these are all of the Stephen King, so I'm not going to take those out. But let's start on this side. I own two Fitzek Bücher. He's a German author who's in really, really popular in Germany for his thrillers. I tried to read this one, hated it. I do own this one. At some point I need to try to read it. But yeah, German thriller author, really, really popular. He also has like board games and stuff from his stories. But I just, I don't know, I really didn't enjoy what little I read by him. Then we're coming to this one. This book has a really, really special place in my heart. It's a book I've never finished um, because, <laughs> I don't know, I, I need to give it another try. It's called Die Träume des Jonathan Jabok or The Dreams of Jonathan Jabok. And it's by Ralf Isau. I don't know if it's a German author, to be honest, but... Uh, I, a friend of mine gave me this and, well, I borrowed it and I was supposed to give it back, but now we have like no contact for like, I don't know, the last time I talked to her was like 13 years ago, we just grew apart and I never had a chance to give her the book back. Um, and every time I open it, it smells like her and it's such a vivid memory and I miss her sometimes. I just have no means of contacting her sadly because she never used social media that much um but never actually and i don't have her phone number and i don't know anyone who would have stayed in contact with her so yeah sadly i can't reach her but every time i smell the book i remember her and that is why i never finished reading it because i don't want to open it too much <laughs> um so the smell stays because she had like this really distinct um essential oil smell but it was like a nice smell and it just you know it's just a smell i remember her for and so yeah we went to well middle school high school together like that time around and yeah sadly we lost contact because i'm really not good with staying in contact with people and so yeah that book will forever be in my collection if someday i should meet her again i can give it back to her Then I do also own a German copy of Hannibal, uh, but The Silence of the Lambs. This is this part. As you can see, it's a well-loved um, version. I think my partner owned this one, but yeah, now it's in my bookshelves because he doesn't have any bookshelves. Um, he also doesn't need any bookshelves because I have more than enough for the both of, both of us. And then we have a lot of Stephen King books. All of, let me show you, all of these of Stephen King. But yeah, we have Desperation, Shining, uh, Carrie, The Bu- um, oh, what it's called in English. Is it called The Buick in English? Oh, From a Buick. It's called From a Buick 8. I own these in English, most of these. Um, we have Christine, um, Fire Child, I don't know what's called in English, but in German it's Fire Child. Um, Night Shift and the. Um, oh god. 
the pet cemetery. <laughs> so yeah, a lot of like Stephen King books. I don't read these because I read the originals. Um, these are just here because I love to own them. And yeah, then we have a few books that are really just um, not mentionable, you know. Then we have one series. Then we have this series by Christopher Marty. Um, I'm pretty sure he's a German author. And um, yeah, these were some fantasy books I really, really loved. Um, funnily, though, I never read this one and this one I only read half because at some point I just lost interest but that was fine uh, but yeah this series is really really similar to uh, what it's called by Neil Gaiman Neverwhere this series is really, really similar to Neverwhere and um, also to like American Gods a little bit uh, like or um, not Percy Jackson but it's it's a series about like, you know, a little girl, an orphaned little girl, and she has some um, powers that she doesn't know of. And somebody takes her in and she learns a lot about different gods. And uh, she travels through hell. Um, yeah, it, it, it's a lot of like mystery, different gods. Bast is in here, for example. And it, it's just a really interesting fantasy series. I tried rereading it. I think last year and I just couldn't get through it which is really really sad because I know that I loved it as like an early teen but yeah it didn't hold up sadly for me but this is definitely one of the series that got me more into fantasy because I just loved the world so much and also more into history because I love the gods so much then also I own like a lot of these smaller fantasy books this is um, Mage Oath and Elven Magic. I don't know what you would translate these two actually. Um, these are, I think, also by the same author, yeah, by Dennis L. McKiernan. These I often went into um, my local bookstore and just rummaged through the bargain bins and stuff like that, and then I just picked random fantasy books to read at home. And I read, I don't know, maybe both of these, maybe one of these. I read a, a kind of amount of these, um, but yeah, so I don't really remember them. It's a long time ago and I'm kind of, I don't know, maybe I should just pick them up at some point and reread them. After that, and I do have to show them to you, we have my um, Twilight books. There's one missing because I lent it to a girl and she... Um, but she, she told me she can't give it back because she lost it, but she never reimbursed me or bought me the book back. She was kind of an asshole. And um, my mom met her mother like a few years later after the incident. And her mother was like, no, she told me she gave it back. And I'm like, no, she didn't give it back. But yeah, <laughs> that is why I only own three, because to be honest, I don't ever never read these again. Um, so I'm not seeing why I should buy them again. But... <laughs> These, I read these so, so much. I loved the Twilight books. Now looking back, I can see the problems with the series, but back then I really, really loved her writing style. Not necessarily the story, but how she wrote the story. And yeah, these ones, I read them so, so much. You can see the lines, well, you can't see the lines, but there are a lot of lines on there and these two you obviously can see. But yeah, I made my mother <laughs> after I read the first two, because the first two I owned in paperback. And then after that I made my mom go and buy them on release day in Germany. Um, you had to wait a long time for the hardcovers um, to come out in Germany, translated. And so yeah, I own these. I kind of, to be fair, I do still love the covers they did for the German versions. Um, you, all, you always have this weird woman on the front, but I kind of love them, so yeah. I was a big fan. And then I went and watched the first movie, which I found okay. I kind of love trashy movies, so I, I found it okay. And then my well, my then boyfriend, my ex-partner, um, wanted to go see the second one in the movies, and I really hated it. So that's a fun thing. Next up we have my Vitamars books. Um, a lot of these are from my partner um, because he was a really, really big fan of Walter Murs. 
me as well but i never bought the books i don't know why i only bought this this smaller version and then my absolute favorite by him which is wilde reise durch die nacht or wild journey through the night is like the literal translation don't know what it would be in english one of the best books out there it's um we have like a 12 year old boy and he kind of goes on a journey with death um because he makes a wager with him and then um it's inspired by this painting series i don't know what they're called i would have to look that up but they are these paintings and he kind of wrote a chapter for each painting um that inspired the story what the boy has to do and see in the journey and i love this this is the only school literature i had to read that i absolutely loved but yeah the rest of these big ones um are his other books we don't own all of them they are quite expensive to be honest and um yeah i think they each cost like 35 quid a piece which i think is incredibly expensive um but yeah they look really really nice and i love Walter Mercer as an author um so they're kind of worth it kind of not okay we are <laughs> at the bottom now um but let's start here these are my sci-fi books um by but they are not by perry roden they are perry roden books there are a lot of authors that wrote perry roden but these uh this is like a really really old german series um that is i think still continued today and there are a lot of books of them they are sci-fi it's kind of like a really slow story of humans going into space and yeah they are really i don't know i like the first one i didn't like the second one so yeah haven't read any more Next up, we have my Kathy Rice books. Um, these, together with Simon Beckett, were like my absolute favorites for a long, long while. Um, I just loved crime series, and yeah, Kathy Rice, really, really great author. Um, I own like four German ones and a few more English ones of those. And then we have Terry Pratchett. Um, these are also my partners. He loves Terry Pratchett. I am. Um, but I like his book, but wouldn't say that I love his books. Um, and then, I mean, I think like every child of my age, I did own Aragon. Um, which the funny thing is, and I think that is something that Germans tend to do. Um, the first one is called Aragon. They let it be called Aragon in Germany as well. And then the second book they called Aragon with an undertitle. Which makes no sense to me, to be honest. But um, yeah, this is the second one. And I, for the first one, I own this copy. I do know that I owned one of these copies, but it somehow was lost at some point in time. And yeah, I put two. I don't know why. I like these books. I would absolutely love to read these again in English. Um, I just kind of don't want to spend the money, if I'm honest. Though I do like the newer stuff of Panini. Um, but yeah. I mean, I'm a child of my time, you know, so obviously I own these. And then let us go down another um, one. We'll talk about these in a minute. Um, here we have a little bit more fantasy. These are called uh, the Vampiraten. I don't know what they're called in English, but um, they're pretty much like vampire pirates. I love the series um so yeah i own two of them i don't know if there are more out there a lot of these series are obviously unfinished because i started them as a teen and then i never stuck with them you know um yeah and then we have a lot of jk rowling we have all of the harry potter books in german and then the um the beetle the bard um tales and yeah, they just stay here, you know, because they are memories and so I want to keep those books. Now, I have to, well, I have to take these out, I think. Um, we're now coming to the last section of my German books. And most of these, well, half of these are non-fiction books, um, which I do own a few in German um, from one author, which I will talk about. And then the second half are my childhood books, like my really young childhood books. Oh, also, my German Dracula copy, because I did read Dracula in German first. 
Uh, and I have this really, really um, ugly copy. Don't know why they made it this ugly, but you know. And then also we have the Hobbit down here in this nice little German copy. Okay, so these are my favorite German non-fiction ones. These are by um, two married people. Um, we have Mark Benecke and Lydia Benecke. And um, he is like a crime analyst, I think. And she is a psychologist who works with um, perpetrators in jails and stuff. And I don't know if they still do both of those jobs, but um, they write books and they go on tour with those books. So I don't really know if they still do their original jobs. Um, but yeah, they did it for they did those for a long time. So I have one of um, her about psychopath, especially women. Uh, which was really really interesting to read and then I have a few of his where he talks about his cases and cases he did and he is uh, known for his work with insects and stuff like that and these are incredibly interesting books um, so yeah we have uh, mort methods uh, like um, killing methods kind of you know um, that is called then we have mummies in Palermo which is you know about his time not in Germany and then we have um, from the like dark chamber of evil, but this is just like general cases, um, stuff like that. And um, yeah, I really love his books. I think they are really, really interesting. I do need to continue buying them. I, I, I don't know. I always forget that I can also buy German books, you know, but um, yeah, these are incredibly interesting. So I don't know if they are translated to be fair, but if they are out there in the translated version or you read German books, I would really recommend these if you are into true crime and more a little bit and more interested in like the methods, what how they can um, know how old the body is and stuff like that, you know, he focuses on stuff like that. So those are really, really interesting about that. And then let's talk well, I have a few more like non-fiction one that is really really disturbing which is called Betty. Um, I took, um, oh what was it called in English? I took parenting classes? It's not really a parenting class but it's called Erziehungswissenschaften like parenting science but it's more, but it is part that. Um, but yeah, it was a little bit more broadly, but it was really interesting. And this is a protocol of a therapy session from like a little girl that wants to kill her little brother because uh, she was really disturbed. And this was a really hard to read book. Um, they have her drawings in there. She says really disturbing things. And yeah, we analyzed it kind of and talked about it. And it was really disturbing, to be honest. I think I started that class in like eighth grade. It was like one where one could choose which class we wanted to do. And yeah, that was really, really heavy topic wise. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about a few childhood books. We have these two. I don't know if they exist outside of Germany. Probably do. But yeah, it's a Sums. I don't even know what it would be called in English. I will look this one up um, and put it here. But yeah, um, as you can see, <laughs> the yellow one is really, really bleached. Um, I have these for such a long time but yeah it's kind of like this little alien pig creature and he gets adopted by this couple and he um, yeah it's a really really weird son to them and they have a lot of adventures and I really loved these as a child so yeah I kept them because I didn't want to um, give them away if I'm honest and then we have these really, really damaged ones. Um, I think I got them damaged already. Um, but yeah, these are the Five Friends by Anna Blyton. Um, I'm assuming that you know them. Uh, I think it's a really, really popular series. But yeah, I have the Five Friends and her, they are um, like enjoyable. But they are funnest adventures, kind of. And then we have Five Friends on the... Um, Island. But yeah, I love these always, also because the dog is with them. Um, but yeah, I found this to be really, really fun. 
like reading them. And they are really, really damaged because I'm pretty sure that we got them second hand already. And then I only have a few of these left. I owned a lot, a lot more, but I did get rid of kind of a few of them before I had the space to keep my books. And these ones were in my pa parents' house, um, so they was they were kind of like saved from me having to get rid of books. Um, but yeah, these are the three question marks. I know they are called something different in other countries, but in Germany they are called the three question marks. I'm gonna put the title here because I think it's more like the three investigators or something like that. Uh, but yeah, I have these two like um, omnibus type books where there are, I think, two or three stories in them and then I have this standalone book. And I absolutely loved this series. Um, it was so good. And so I read, I don't know, like 20 of those books and I got rid of, of a lot of them. I don't technically have the storage for all of them, so I'm kind of glad I had to get rid of them at some point, but I, because I don't know if I could at this moment in time. But yeah, I got rid of them. And then we have one that I bought really, really recently. So it's not really a childhood book, but yeah, that is Uzumaki's by Run to Horror. It is written on English on here, but it is the German version. I don't know why they uh, stuck with the English title because it's completely written in German so yeah I don't know but I love this version it's really really cool um, and yeah if you've never read Uzumaki you really should it's by Junji Ito really really great and then yes I bought this as a child but well, as a teenager do you know this it's called Elfenlied or Elf song, I would assume in different languages. Um, it is a really, really over sexual, totally brutal manga. And the funny thing is, um, it's a book up that is um, supposed to be sold to people over 18. Um, so, yeah, they weren't allowed to sell me this, but they still sold me this. Um, I don't know if I can show you any of this. I I don't think so. Um, but yeah, he finds this girl on the beach and she just kills people um, because she's afraid and she was in some kind of experiment and she has like these um, invisible extra arms and yeah, she half of the time she looks like this and the other half she's naked, really sexualized and kills people. And I really loved it when I was a teen. So um, I'm not gonna talk anymore about that. Um, but yeah. These are all of, no, these are not all of the German books, um, but these are all of the German books that are on this bookshelf. And now we're going to do a quick talk about the books that I got from my grandpa um, when he passed away. Okay, I'm sorry for the perspective, but yeah, we're going to talk about the books that are up there because those are the really, really pretty poet books that I got from my grandpa when my grandpa passed away. Um, he loved those books and I wanted to make sure that they are kept in the family and that they are kept safe. Sadly, really, really sadly, my grandpa was a big smoker, so they all smell kind of badly, like like a heavy smoker had them, you know? Um, but yeah, let me show you. Okay, so these are the first ones. Um, these are by Wilhelm Busch and it's pretty much all of his... Um, stuff that he ever did in all three of those. Um, I'm sorry, they're really, really... They don't feel nicely because of the smoke. Um, but yeah, those are like really small comics with um, sentences underneath them. And Max and Moritz, a really, really popular series in Germany, uh, where they are only... Well, they they die at the end every time. It's I think I talked about it in another video, but yeah. There are these really like small little stories and pretty much at the end Max and Moritz always are like really mischievous and they always hurt, they kind of hurt the people that they do jokes on and then they die in the end. So yeah, I found them really, really funny. I absolutely loved them. And uh, yeah, I think these are the books that my grandpa <coughs> showed me the most when I was growing up.
And then we have, for example, one of these. Um, this is from Theodore Fontaine. So they aren't only German authors. They are also um, like but different language authors. They are just all like, you know, older um, people and stuff like that. But yeah, these I never read. Um, but what my grandfather used to do is um, take little post-it notes and write sentences and lines from these books on them and then gave them to me because he thinks, well, he um, found them to be reminiscent of me. So that is why I keep all of these books because they mean so much to me. But yeah, I, I probably don't think that I will ever read them. Um, and I also have to still try and get rid of the um, smoke stuff that is on them, sadly. So yeah. Let me get you up a little bit. Okay, so <laughs> that is where this video ends. Um, yeah, I kind of just wanted to show you, you know, the German books, what they mean to me, um, where they're coming from, you know, all of that. Like, because they are a part of my collection and I just don't really ever get to talk about them because obviously I talk about the new books and the English books on here a little bit more of the time. So yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this little view into my world for my 29th birthday and yeah maybe leave a like subscribe that would mean a lot to me and hopefully i will see you in the next video bye bye